Today's lesson is on points, lines, and planes, and we're going to start with some terminology that you're probably already familiar with, but let's just fill in our notes here, and typically what I like you to do at the end of the lesson is maybe come back up to the top and write your essential question at that time, so I don't ever give you the essential question. That's up to you to figure out what that is. So let's start with a point. A point indicates a location and has no size, and you name a point with a capital letter, such as this. This would be point A, and I would call it point A. Simple enough. All right, a line, it's represented by a straight path that extends in opposite directions without end and has no thickness. A line contains infinitely many points. You can name a line by any two points on the line, such as this. And this looks like a dash line here, but it should be a solid line. So if we wanted to talk about line AB, we would label it like that. Or sometimes, a lot of times actually, you'll see lines labeled with just a small lowercase letter. Line L there. I could call this line J. So a couple of different ways to name a line. Just remember that in the notation, the symbol for line is the little line over the top with two arrows on each end. Okay, well what about a plane? A plane is represented by a flat surface that extends without end and has no thickness. A plane contains infinitely many lines. You can name a plane by a capital letter such as plane P, and we typically draw it like this, kind of looking like a parallelogram if you know what a parallelogram is. So that's plane P, that's what we would call it. Or you can pick any three points in the plane. So let's say we got A, B, C, we could call that plane a, B, C. Any three points, but you got to be careful that those points are not on the same line. Okay, so what is the word for not on the same line? Non-collinear. So points that are not on the same line would be called non-collinear points. Hence, I would call points that are on the same line collinear points. Points that are on the same line are collinear points. Points and lines that lie in the same plane are called coplanar. Coplanar points, coplanar lines. So here's an example. We've got this plane, this plane P. Right? We can call it plane P, or we could call it plane V, S, R, whatever we wanted to. We're going to call it plane P here. And the question is, what are two other names for line Q, T? So here's line Q, T. So remember, all I need to do is pick any two points that are on that line, and it's the same line. So how about this? Why don't we call it Q, S? That'd be correct, wouldn't it? Q, S? Oh no, I'm looking at, sorry, that's not right. QT, here's QT. I better sketch it so I can see it. QT, what else could I call it? Well, I could call it NT, right? I could call it line NT. Or I could call it line M. Those are two other names. Are there any other names? How about NQ? Would that work? Sure, that would work, but they only asked for two. What are two other ways to name plane P? Okay, well, remember what we got to do here is we got to pick any three non-collinear points on that plane. So how about this? How about plane R, S, V? Those are non-collinear, so that's a name. Plane R, S, V, and how about Q, S, V? Those would work. And there may be others. Our points N, S, and V coplanar. Let me put dots on them. N, here's N, S, and V. Okay, let's look at this for a second. So it looks like this line here, what they're trying to represent is this line 
this line NT or QT coming up from underneath the plane, going through the plane, and then coming out through the top of the plane. So our points N, S, and V coplanar, well, it looks like they're not because N is down here underneath that plane. However, I want to tell you this and I want you to remember this, that they are coplanar and the reason they are coplanar, even though they don't look coplanar, is because any three non-collinear points define a plane. So, even though I don't have the plane showing there in my diagram, when I ask you, and I promise I will ask you on your quiz and test, I'll give you three non-collinear points, and even though you're going to think, oh, I don't see the plane that those create, or that they are on, any three non-collinear points make a plane. All right, let's get some more terms. A line segment A line segment is a part of a line that consists of two endpoints and all points between them. You can name a segment by its two endpoints. So, for instance, here's a line segment. We got X and Y. So, this would be segment XY. And the way we use notation to name that is we put our two letters and we put our little segment over the top of it. Now please take note that the little segment over the top of our XY does not have endpoints. So when you're using your notation, I'm very, very picky about it. And if you want to use notation for line segment and you put the two endpoints on the end of your little segment up there, you're going to lose a point. So you got to be very careful with your notation. Okay, what is it that's part of a line that consists of one endpoint? So let's just look at it. And all the points on the line on one side of that endpoint, of course you know that's a ray. You can name a ray by its endpoint and another point on the ray. So we got to have at least two points. But we c there are infinite points on that ray, right? An infinite number. The order of the points indicates the ray's direction. In other words, you always name the ray starting with the endpoint. Always name the ray starting with the endpoint. So this right here, I could call it either ray AC or I could call it ray AB. Those are the same rays. And the, oh, I can't put that right there because I'm getting in my next lines. I'll write it over here on the side. So this is either ray AB, which I would notate like this. You notice I've got no endpoint on the little ray up there, or I could call it ray AC. And those are the only two names for that ray. You can't call it ray BC. You can't call it ray CA. It's got to be either one of those two names. You've got to start with the endpoint. All right. What are two rays that share the same endpoint? So there's an endpoint and form a line. Okay, so there's one ray, there's the other ray. Those are called opposite rays. You can name opposite rays by their shared endpoint and any other point on each ray. So these two opposite rays are AC and AB. Those are the opposite rays you see there. Okay, let's look at this little example I got for you here. 
Name three segments. Okay, so this is an example related to all the terminology we've learned. Name three segments in the figure above. Okay, well, DE is one, DF is one, and EF is one. Okay, now, just know that EF and FE are the same segment. It doesn't matter which way I name them. Likewise with DF and FD and DE and ED. All right, name three rays. Okay, well, D, E is a ray, which also happens to be the same ray as DF, so I can't put down DF. EF is a ray, and ED is a different ray. All right, there are more. You might want to try to name all the rays in that picture and name the opposite rays in the figure. Okay, well, that would be ray ED and EF. And those are the only two opposite rays we can name because those are the only two that we see share the same endpoint. All right. What have we got next? We've got to learn about some postulates, axioms. Pretty soon we'll learn about theorems. You're going to learn that geometry has so many definitions, postulates, and theorems, and you're going to make flashcards for all of these. We've already talked about this, but we got to first talk about what they are. A postulate or axiom is an accepted statement of fact. And here's our first postulate. Through any two points, there's exactly one line. So if I give you two points and I say, is there a line that connects these two points? Yes, any, through any two points, there is a line. A, B, all right. When two or more geometric figures intersect, their intersection is the set of points the figures have in common. So two, so these are two lines intersecting here. The intersection is the points they have in common. So that would be the intersection right there. Okay, so our next postulate says, if two distinct lines intersect, then they intersect in exactly one point. You need to remember that. The intersection of two lines is a point and nothing more. It can never be anything more than a point when two lines intersect. Postulate 1-3. If two distinct planes intersect, then they will intersect in exactly one line. Every single time two planes intersect, their intersection is a line. And on that line are all the points that those two planes share. So right here in this picture, planes RST and WST intersect in line ST. Line ST. Okay, postulate 1-4. Through any three non-collinear points, there's exactly one plane. So that's what I was telling you just a few minutes ago. This is one of the most difficult concepts for students to get, it seems like, that it's, it doesn't matter if it shows up in the drawing or the figure. If I give you three non-collinear points, there is a plane that has those three points on it. So let's see, which plane contains points N, P, and Q? N, so you got to remember, you always got to visualize with these plane problems that it's not really a box. All these surfaces of this box extend infinitely in two directions. But this is the best we can do with drawing. Which plane contains points N, P, and Q? Well, that's the bottom of that box, or that bottom plane. So that would be plane... N, P, Q, R. And I'm going to name it with all three of those letters because there could be another plane that contains those three points. Okay, which plane contains M, L, and P? Let me use a different color here so I don't get confused. M, L, and P. Okay, well, hmm. I don't see that plane, right? But there is that plane because I told you 
in this postulate 1-4 that that plane does exist because those three points are non-collinear. So that's actually this kind of diagonal looking plane here. So plane N, P, L, M is the plane that contains those three points. Okay, so what I generally like to do at the end of each lesson is to put some practice problems that I'm going to let you pause here and do for yourself. So you pause, work through these practice problems, and then start the video back up, and I'll have the answers written down there for you. Let's see how you do. Please take note of the answers that I've written here, and remember that with a lot of these questions, my answers aren't the only correct ones. For instance, the first one, three points that are collinear, I picked D, A, and C. Uh, could we have picked any others? Mm, maybe not. Maybe, the, maybe that is the only answer for that one. Any three points that are coplanar, right there, I could have picked any three non-collinear points. Four points that are not coplanar, I just had to pick three that are on that plane pictured there and then put E with it because clearly that's on a different plane. Name three points in the diagram that are not collinear. Many answers for that. Name the point in the diagram that is coplanar with points A, D, and E. Well, that has to be point H because that's that front plane right there. All right, take notes out here to the side if you have questions about any of these, and we'll talk about them in class tomorrow. All right, these drawings, you're probably going to have something different than I have. So you can take a look at mine and make sure that yours are correct, even though they probably don't look like mine. And there is the last one. Remember, the opposite rays have to have the same endpoint. So the only way you can have opposite rays is for that endpoint to be in between two of the other points you pick. Okay, I always will have a summary at the end of your lesson, but I have a hard time sometimes getting students to write summaries. So I'm going to give you the option of either writing a summary of the lesson or finding one more problem from your textbook to work that will reinforce the lesson for today. Thank you.